So I'm going to start with an analogy or a story. Uh, because this uh, graphic um, is pretty relevant to me. And uh, it's because in the countries like South Africa and my country, we swim a fair bit compared to some other countries, which we won't mention. So we swim a fair bit and we're fairly familiar with that flag. Because that flag is one of the two that um, dictate or, or show the zone of the beach where you're, you can swim if you want to be safe and secure. And so most of the uh, swimmers that come to the beach, the locals for example, they already have a knowledge of um, the safety issues and you're safer if you swim between the flags. And if you swim outside the flags, we don't care. As lifeguards, we don't care. Uh, it's not the right attitude, I guess, but um, um, some of the locals have this swimming at the beach awareness. Now, we do get a lot of international people, as, as, as does Britain, and particularly students. And uh, some of these students have no idea how to swim. Uh, and they don't have any knowledge of these flags, for example, or nor do they have any appreciation or knowledge of the risks and the dangers of swimming outside the flags. And so that's, that's where they behave badly. You see, information security awareness is all about human behavior. And the term has only been around since uh, human behavior or human aspects of information security uh, be has become popular. So and that's about 10 to 15 years, I, I think. And some of my colleagues might disagree or confirm that. And so in the last 15 years, um, uh, we've seen the emphasis increase and grow from away from the technology, that's the hardware and the software, and, and the people the behavior of computer users has become uh, a really hot topic and that's why we have the conference in the last two days and we have it every year and this this area is growing now so you know people are safer if they have knowledge of what here if they have knowledge of the, the flags they have knowledge of the fact that you have to be able to swim they have knowledge that sharks are dangerous and jellyfish there you could be stung and uh, sea lice and whatever else now another aspect to information security awareness is a thing called attitude maybe we, got, we, we just for the moment to assume that attitude attitude towards what well in this uh, analogy we do get some undesirables or young men that come down to the beach and uh, their attitude is not that great towards the ocean, towards lifeguards. They sometimes accuse us of only saving the pretty ones and so they, they just have a poor attitude and they just don't swim between the flags so their behavior is bad. You see, awareness in this case relates to how people behave. So it is with information security awareness. Um, we have other awarenesses too in life. And the, there are analogies here uh, with uh, information security awareness. Road safety is a good one. Uh, you might have great uh, awareness of road safety. Um, now, you, if you do, then you have a great knowledge of the road rules. Uh, probably a knowledge of how the car works a bit. Um, what else have we got knowledge of? If you're a, if you're really um, got road safety awareness, uh, let me see um, what you shouldn't do. I mean, in terms of behaviour, uh, for example, you know what's unsafe. Uh, in in terms of attitude towards road safety, um, teenagers sometimes have the wrong attitude, particularly if there are four in the car and the peers, they're all about the same age, uh, they will be on the phone, they will uh, not put the blinker on, they will be speeding and, and talking and be distracted, etc. Uh, so do they have good road safety awareness? Uh, it's debatable. 
So once again, you can sort of see that wh whatever we talk about in terms of awareness is a, is a sort of made up of knowledge of something and attitude towards something. And today I want to discuss with you what should it be in terms of information security awareness. In, in some later slides, I want, to, I want you to sort of express your opinion as to um, knowledge of what? If I say your information secure, uh, um, you have information security awareness, uh, and we define it, maybe just for the moment, assume we define it as being composed of uh, knowledge of something and attitude towards something. So what are those two things? I think I know what they are. Well, that's not entirely true. I'm willing to, to, to look at options, and we'll talk about the options later. Another awareness, of course, is this uh, safe sex awareness, in, particularly in terms of contracting um, the, the HIV virus, in terms of uh, you know, people who are aware of safe sex are less likely to contract HIV because they know, they have a knowledge of, what have they got a knowledge of here? Um, knowledge of the consequences, perhaps, a knowledge of um, the protection mechanisms, etc. Similarly, in the terms of health, for example, um, in, in managing some of the cancers like breast cancer and prostate cancer, for example, where we know if you catch it early, uh, you won't die. It's pretty good statistics to say you, you, you won't die from it. And so that's knowledge of those sorts of things, uh, you know, to make sure you get checkups. The behavior comes in when you, well, you get checkups regularly, so you do catch it early. And so there is a thing, I suppose, called safe sex awareness. Um, some of the others, are, you can, I know there's been work done in terms of awareness in those areas, and I'm not terribly familiar with them, but um, environmental damage, for example, you can have awareness of environmental damage, I'm sure, and we could, we could use the same analogy. So information security awareness, that's ISA. Uh, why is it important? Why are we talking about it now? And I might say that I wanted to, wanted to create a slide that had how it is defined by the likes of the International Standards Organization, ISO 27000 series, how it might be defined by the NIST uh, set of standards, and how it might be defined by my professional association, ISACA. Now, I haven't looked recently, and I was a bit rushed with this, and so, I don't think it's defined in any of those things. It might be in NIST. Might be, someone might be able to confirm that. But with the 27,000 series, which is our sort of Bible in terms of information security, uh, I don't think in the glossary they've got that term, information security awareness. And so we're in the process, you see, it's still a new term. And I can't tell whether you've heard of it much. I, don't, I haven't spoken to you and I'm not sure your background. But I do go to conferences and uh, we're talking about it a lot. And it's, it, it means that we're talking about how do we improve the behavior of computer users uh, with, because the assumption is if the users behave better, uh, there's, there's a, hier a logic hier hierarchy here. If the users behave better, they comply with standards more, they mitigate the risks, they, what's the next one? They, they, the, the organization becomes more secure. And that's, that's why we're here, because we want the organization to be more secure. And so we look at information security awareness as a characteristic of people so that we can perhaps measure it. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, so it's important. I couldn't think of any more reasons why it's important. Now, I didn't want to put here that it eventually means we behave better and we have better security. I didn't want to put that because that's too indirect. I mean, on its own, um, this, this characteristic of people, uh, what can we do with it? Because we are having studies done uh, in the last two days and, and a number of us are looking at uh, this concept and how to measure this thing, whatever it might be. And when we've got it, and we say we've got it, and I can show you some slides in a moment, uh, 
we might score it. You, Steve's a 6.2 in terms of awareness, and I'm an 8.3. Uh, so I have better awareness than Steve, for example. Now, what can we do with that? I mean, I'm not sure in a real world where I've come from whether we can do much with the fact you know, on an individual basis. Um, you know, you can't wear it around and, and you can't do that to individuals. You just wouldn't be able to do it ethically, I don't think. But as a group of people, as your whole, uh, you know, take the mean of all your employees, uh, I think we're in business there perhaps because uh, we're, we think we're going to get to the point where we can benchmark uh, information security awareness um, across the organisation perhaps or even departments within the organisation or maybe even um, certain sec uh, IT people versus non-IT people or whatever. So we can identify employees that are supposedly risky because their information security awareness number is low. In other words, they're risky because they have the potential to behave badly. Now, well, it's important because, and this is really the, ma is the major thing, yes, the major reason why we all, we as researchers, want to uh, uh, um, quantify it, is the word. We're desperate to quantify this thing, is because once we know how our employees are in terms of their information security awareness by, say, a number of some sort, uh, we're now in a position to customise these um, training and seminars, etc., and any other risk communication activities that we might want to do, um, and, and, and giving them to our employees, and perhaps measuring them beforehand, do the intervention training, measure them afterwards to see what the improvement is, see, uh, and see how our intervention strategy was successful or not, and then modified, etc., etc. So it's only these things here that will improve behaviour. This, this doesn't improve behaviour. Knowing what the information security awareness is doesn't do anything for organisations. But you can use it to get to doing this, uh, I suppose, um, and offering better training and risk communication and, uh, and education. Now, we could take it a little further. If we get to the point where um, we, we can benchmark certain industries and industry types, you know, defence industry versus the health industry versus the finance industry, for example, we can have some benchmark levels where other banks and um, defence agencies, etc., can compare themselves to another organisation. Uh, what's done like that? There's, there's, they, do, they do other things like that, don't they? It's, I know what it is. It's the um, um, re, re, um, amount of money spent on security, for example. You know, how much, how much of their revenue do they spend on security? And there are numbers in, uh, that they, they compare themselves to. Is it 1% of total revenue or 2% or whatever? So maybe that could be useful. So perhaps that's why it's important. So, I'm not sure this is a model, but this just really, this is getting to the point as to what it is to some extent. Now, the top row is, when you're dealing with um, behaviour, I've said this in the last two days, you must work with a psychologist because they, that's what they do for a job. I mean, we, we as IT people or security people are not competent to work with behaviour. We do, we do need their help. And so it's like in the top line, in a sense, uh, my, my colleagues in my team, uh, three of them are psychologists, and they saw those sorts of factors um, as being the ones that influence, well, our influence computer users, there's that term again, Steve. Um, at least I'm not using the term end user. I was first, you know what an end user is? You're not old enough. Um, end users came out of the mainframe uh, era and they were really at the end of the line. And someone pointed this out to me only a few years ago. They said, don't use that word, it shows your age. So, uh, so I started using computer user rather than just user, because as David said yesterday from Kaspersky, a user is a drug addict. I mean, you can't just use a user. 
anyway. So, um, so the individual factors are things like, you know, your age and the gender and uh, 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 all those sorts of things, psychological bits like your personality, um, sociological stuff, self-efficacy, which is are you capable to act in a certain way, et cetera, et cetera. Organisational factors, and we're doing some research about to start, in a sense, on organisational culture and how that impacts upon computer users in terms of, say, their behaviour, their attitude and their knowledge. Now, don't, at this point, don't assume that I think necessarily that those three elements uh, represent information security awareness. It's up for grabs, in my opinion. So just for the moment there, I've just got them there. Uh, intervention factors have a lot to do with people's knowledge, for example, in particular, don't they? Education, training, and the experience on the job. So all these things are coming into a computer user, and that gives them uh, knowledge. Now, the words under those three, uh, three um, I suppose, characteristics or things about a human being, um, they represent our current areas of um, focus in terms of information security awareness. We think these seven areas are the areas that senior management and CEOs and, and uh, uh, certified information security officers, etc., cetera, uh, think they're the most important uh, in terms of um, breaches, etc., and security issues. Internet use, email use, social net site, networking site use, password management, incident reporting, information handling, and mobile computing. And so we, we think we can uh, go into an organization and uh, get employees to do a, do a quick survey, quick, hmm, not quick at the moment, but it will be when we cut it down, um, and we can see how well they're doing in terms of those seven areas. And in fact, we can compare the seven areas with each other, et cetera, et cetera. But that's um, in a moment. I think it might be the next slide, perhaps. So that's sort of a model of what we're looking at in a sense. But before I go much further, what sort of behavior am I considering? Now, here's another term, is user behavior. Computer user behaviour. Um, where was it? It was the first day. Someone was talking about a different form of behaviour. I can't think of what it was. But anyway, we've got to be a bit careful. I've got to identify or, or um, indicate what sort of behaviour I'm talking about. Now, this is sort of my scales here, um, you know, to taken from a number of sources. So I think there are three types of behaviour. Um, the risk-averse behaviour, which is good stuff, deliberately good, so we're not worried about that behaviour, right? Always log off when your computer's unattended. Disallow email attachments from unknown sources and those sorts of things. Uh, this risk inclined to this deliberate behaviour, uh, uh, we're not looking at that either. That really isn't um, the, the target behaviour of any of this information security awareness study. Uh, this, is, this is the malicious stuff, writing, disseminating malicious code, for example, hacking into people's accounts and what have you. I mean, that tends to be external. Well, is that true? Maybe not. That's totally true. But um, So we're concerned with the middle bit. Uh, these sorts of uh, accidental, uh, non-malicious behaviours, leaving a computer unattended. I'm not sure whether you are familiar with some of these. And this, of course, uh, in terms of a knowledge, uh, you need to know that these are uh, poor behaviours. And somebody said, I, I, I caught someone the other day trying to measure breaches again. We haven't, we haven't measured breaches for 20 years because it's hard to do. Now, when you've got accidental breaches, people can't even report it because they don't know they've done it. Some of these things, you know, you don't know when people have opened an unsolicited email attachment. Nothing might happen, for example. Uh, you know, of course, if they have um, reported it, um, see, accidental behaviour is not reporting security incidents, accessing dubious websites. These are all bad, what do we call bad behaviours. They're not good, but they, they're non malicious and they're accidental. So that, that's, the, that's what we're trying to get to. We're trying to improve that. And the only reason we're looking at information security awareness is because it might be a predictor 
of the, the behavior of the person. It's a bit dangerous that, looking at it as a predictor, particularly when, have you ever thought about trying to m measure a person's behavior in that sense? Those things, I mean, you can't observe them. We at universities can't, because of ethics, we, we don't get ethics approval, to have cameras on people. So you, and even if you had cameras on them, you can't, you, you, you can't see a lot of these things happening. So what do you do? In a, in a questionnaire, you ask them, do you do these things? Or would you do these things? Now, how reliable is that gonna be? We're, we're very realistic about this. Um, Self-reported behavior is as good as it gets. And we cannot put much emphasis on it. You gotta put very little emphasis on self-reported behavior. Why? There's a thing called social desirability bias. And so people answer how they think we want them to answer, or how they think that their boss wants them to answer, or how they think they should answer, you know, even though they don't, don't do these things, or they do do those things. Um, so that's behavior. So I'm still getting to the point now. I've sort of started out saying, for example, that um, information security awareness is this knowledge and attitude um, I'm not so sure it's behavior as such. It might well be intended behavior, but I wouldn't suggest that it's actual behavior as part of information security awareness. So uh, how should, what, what is it? Well, let me see, go to the next slide perhaps. No, that's not gonna show, I'll go back. Um, is it, for example, uh, knowledge of risks an attitude towards risks only. Is that enough? Now we don't know because no, we haven't done the research on this yet. The next piece of research I'm doing, I'm looking at risks, threats, and consequences. Previous research you'll see from the next slide or two, I've done it on knowledge of policy, uh, policies and procedures and attitude towards policies and procedures. Now that sounds a bit indirect perhaps, uh, but we sort of felt, now it, it falls over if an organization doesn't have policies a bit. Um, but then again, there are these generic type policies that are sort of in every organization to some extent. So th that's what we've used. And I don't like it so much. I think I, and I'm eager to do this test on information security awareness as being knowledge uh, of risks, threats, and countermeasures. Uh, 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 risks, threats, and consequences of when a threat happens. Um, but is that gonna be it? Is that enough, I wonder? Uh, what's another one? We could do it just on perceived risks. You can, and I've done this study, you can ask people how they perceive the risks to either them or their organization. And you might, you could do it on that perhaps. Uh, I'm not sure that's enough. Uh, what else can we look at there? Um, Anyone got any ideas? What else could we look at if we're trying to establish someone's awareness? And what are we, what's it made up of? That's what I'm trying to say. And, and in a sense, until we know that, we, sort of, we don't know how to measure it. However, a typical study, happened to be done by me, well, my group, um, is, was this. And I'll show you how we uh, tried to test out or to examine whether the KAB model, knowledge, attitude, and behavior, was acceptable, was valid. And as I said, we, um, we, we used knowledge of policies and procedures and attitude towards policies and procedures. Uh, I don't know whether you know Qualtrics. Qualtrics is a survey firm and you write your own web-based questionnaire and it's distributed to, to a panel of whoever you want to choose you know, a criteria, they filter out, and it happened to be, uh, how many do we get? We get 1,073 Australian working adults. In that case, cost you, uh, in my money, $7 each for each one of those responses. So um, that's about $7,000. Uh, in fact, um, there were 1,073 attempts, so but 553 of those we filtered out via the survey, in other words, if you didn't have policies in your organization, out. Not interested in you. If you never used a computer, out. You know, so we had to filter right out. So we, we got back and we filtered 20 out because they were dodgy responses. You know, these people get $4 for every survey they do. And 
so, so a lot of them just go down one side. So what do you do? You, you make sure your questions are negative and positive so they can't just go down one side. So try and do that. So, um, and we used the seven focus areas that I um, talked about in another screen. And we had nine questions each, show you a couple of these in a minute, uh, three knowledge questions, three attitude questions, and three behavior questions in order to come up with a number. Um, or for information security awareness. I think I've got to move on a bit here. Um, and we had these five point scales on all, all each of these questions, and you'll see that in a moment. We went from uh, strongly disagree to strongly agree. Now, this is the result. I, 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 maybe I should go to, um, uh, let me go here. here. Here is a couple of questions here. If you can, I think you can read them, can you not? Uh, which one is this here? There it is. Um, this is an attitude question, Here's, or a statement really, and if it's got an asterisk, it means that the, the, it was reverse scored. Now we would ask these people, consider this if you would do this questionnaire, or whether your organization would do it. It is a bad idea to post sensitive information about my work on Facebook. And we found that SD is uh, strongly disagree and disagree, uh, agree and strongly agree. So we just took the mean, you know, they went from one to five. We took the mean would be, it was 4.36, was pretty high. But the agreeable, you know, they did pretty well here with an 86, 86 points, if you like, across 500 people um, on that particular uh, social networking site use. This one here is password management. It is a good idea to use a strong password. Remember now we're testing attitude. So we want to see what they think about. And so we had to you know, start these statements with, it is a bad idea to post things on social networking sites about my work I wouldn't say in a public place. And we had um, 21 of those particular questions uh, for attitude. Did we get knowledge here? Yeah, there's knowledge here. Now knowledge, for example, um, EM is email management. I should not forward emails that someone might find offensive. We do that one before? No. Uh, and of course, uh, the positive answers, the, the, the agree and the strongly agree, uh, 82.7, so that's pretty high. So it's sort of the top of the list because they're sorted on this column, as it were. I didn't show you them all because this particular questionnaire has got uh, IP on it, and you, you know we can't just give it to you because it's uh, jointly owned by the university and the Defence Science Organisation of Australia. Um, so that's the sort of questions. Now go to the, um, let me go to the knowledge of uh, the behavior question, self-reported behavior. Now this is the dubious one. This is the one where we, we don't have a lot of faith, but there's, we don't know a better way. In terms of information reporting, if I noticed any information incident, security incident, I would report it to management or security personnel. Um, how would you answer? Would you answer truthfully? I mean, we, 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 you know, it, that's what we don't know. Or would you be um, biased by you, what you should do and what, not what you did do? What are some of these others? Information handling was, a, was one of the focus areas. When sensitive documents need to be disposed of, I ensure they are shredded or destroyed so that unauthorized people, I think it goes more under there, don't see them or don't have access or something. And that's pretty much up the top of the tree there too on that particular behavior. Now we go back a bit, go back a bit, go back. So the results of this little survey, I don't want to go into detail. If I was talking to mostly research people, we'd go into detail, et cetera, et cetera. But you can see here, um, well, you take uh, this top screen first, um, we've got total knowledge score across 500 people, total behavior score. And what we've got, we've got a straight line, really. We used to do a, put a straight line through there, as, as shown by these fabulous stats. Some of the people in the room be surprised I'm using them. Um, where it's showing that the, um, uh, that total knowledge um, helps to explain 60% of the total behavior score. That's pretty good, actually. So that knowledge in that case, 60%. That's what you look at. There were 500 people. We, and this is just the significance level, which is less than, highly significant with those double asterisks there. Um, down here, we got attitude versus behavior. Another straight line here. We can draw a straight line there pretty easily. And we noticed that the attitude of people 
um, helps explain the total behavior score. 77% helps to explain behavior. So we think, and not too many other people in the world, I don't think, who, who can show in, with a very thorough survey that there is a relationship between attitude, if you measure it by K, A, and B. Um, yeah, so, you know, we, we think that's quite firm evidence that there is a relationship between the two. In other words, then, if we can improve your um, knowledge and or improve your attitude, then we suggest your behavior is going to be better. How are we going to see? We're about finished now, aren't we? Yeah? Uh, so th that's the same screen again. We've got a relationship going there between those three things. Um, the same sort of screen. We've gone through that. And what we come up, I'm not just going to give you an, an idea of what the results would be. So you see there the seven focus areas on the bottom there. And we can see, for example, this is all about knowledge. And we can see that the highest one there, that's the email use. They have better knowledge of email use than they do of password management across 500 people. Now, uh, this is fairly useful, it seems to me, if you want to look at your employees in, you know, in total, as it were. Um, and that, that, you know, some might claim they're fairly much similar, but I think there's a difference between each of those focus areas. Um, overall, there's the overall one there, not just for knowledge. This is just for knowledge and attitude and behavior. We see there that perhaps information handling uh, is is handled the best, although they're fairly even there. I suppose the one that stands out is password management, which needs which needs some training on that side of things because it's not doing too well down there. And, and similarly, we can take password management by itself and we can see ha how it's affected in term by, by knowledge, attitude, and not just behavior, but intended behavior, I would suggest, or self-reported intended behavior, something like that, and overall. So that's the sort of results we come up with. So what, I hear you say, uh, well, you know, maybe that gives us the, uh, the, the springboard to compare government organizations with private, whoops, <coughs> Uh, and uh, not-for-profits, etc. We can compare defense organizations with uh, low security organizations like universities and libraries. Low security? I think they are. Uh, we can examine the effectiveness of training and risk communication tasks, as I mentioned at the start. Uh, and we, we can refine the questionnaire to enable benchmarking of, of various across different industries, etc. Um, and we talked about that, so I don't have to go through that again. Knowledge of what? What did I miss any of this? I, I sometimes think perhaps that knowledge of what I stand to lose or what my employer stands to lose, which is the same as consequences, isn't it? And I'm not sure whether we got it right with this word policies and procedures, but we're, we're still experimenting. Attitude towards what? Different things here. Maybe they're different things. For example, attitude towards what? My boss? My work in general, I have a bad attitude at work, uh, or just information security. If someone asks you at a party, what do you do? Uh, uh, um, uh, I'm into inf um, yeah, I'm, I'm into information security awareness. Oh, you're aware of information security. What does that mean? It means nothing. I hear people use it all the time. Are you aware of information security? What is it? What part of information security are you aware, are you aware of? Uh, having to comply, that's, you could have an attitude towards that and policies and procedures. Uh, I was going to get into the discussion, but I run out of time. I want to know from you, really, and, and of course my, my uh, uh, organizations in my hometown, of course, uh, does it matter how we measure it? I don't think it does. Maybe every organization needs to measure it differently anyway and use different factors and different elements to it. I, I, I don't think one size fits all, so that makes it different because each organization has, uses a different ruler, in other words. Uh, and I think it's a moving target with different threats arising, different risks arising. Uh, and there's a whole other, a lot of other questions that you may well have in terms of uh, information security awareness. What is it? What should it be? That's my question to you.